anyone who would like to approve the minutes from our January 26th meeting? Are there any changes? I so move. Okay, any seconds? I wasn't at the meeting, but I did read through the minutes and I'll second them. Great, thank you. Okay, Paul is gonna start us off with the capital tree planting program. Okay, uh, as we mentioned last month now, we're looking to start developing the list for the spring plantings. I have several of them that we need to do down on First Street. I have one at 21 First Street that's already said that they would like a tree. Uh, so that's one that we've got down there and I'm looking to get the rest of them. And I'd like, like we said last month, looking to see if we could get another eight or so, nine trees. Well, as we were looking to plant approximately 10 trees down there, we did two at 39 First Street as part of the fall planting. We have this one at 21 First Street. So roughly another eight trees is what we'd be looking to get. When you say eight to 10 trees, Paul, is that based on what's left in the, in the uh, budget for this fiscal year? No, it's what we were trying to do to replace some of the trees that were taken down over there as a result of the sidewalk curb and paving projects that were done down there. So okay. we had told people we would definitely replant and we're trying to fulfill that promise. Awesome. And so then does that mean that all of the money for that is not gonna come out of our budget? Oh, it, it, it's going to be out of the planting budget. Yes, it does come so out. Okay. Out of the money that we had remaining last month, it was about 14,900 plus or minus, and I can get the exact number. That's uh, close enough. Yeah, it was it was about 14,9. We're probably going to end up planting seven or eight trees there. So we'd need maybe another five or six roughly and that would put us in the neighborhood of the remaining budget. Perfect. Hey, Paul, excuse me. Sorry. Um, on Ponus Avenue, the woman Marie with the husband, uh, yep. they were going to put in that the um, irrigation system. I had planned to reach out to them again for the spring. Okay. So that may be another one over there too. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully they will. I know we put a lot of effort into them last time and it didn't end up uh, coming through. But yeah, we'd like to see if they would uh, be willing to do that again. Okay. Andrew, did you want to say something? Yeah, um, Paul, I'm not sure this is the appropriate time, but let's not forget um, that uh, we still need replacement at Fodor Farm. Oh yes, no, that that's totally yeah. aside from this, that's being worked on. Meaning that uh, they're actually looking and sourcing a tree now or soon? I'm working with Gary to try and get him to do it and get okay. him to commit to it. Okay. So I'm working with him to do that. All right, I won't be a nudge, but you know, just, we lost it has not been last year has not been and will not be forgotten is it's an important <laughs> it's like something sticking to our shoes yes <laughs> and it will be done one way or another thank you awesome so 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 as a takeaway message paul um we have about uh, seven or eight trees that we're going to put in to replace trees that were taken down because of construction and we need about another five more locations or roughly, other locations yeah. for five more trees. Okay, and then five, so six trees, roughly, roughly okay. six trees. If we can come up with six locations, that would be good. Okay, awesome. And if it got to the point where we came up with a couple of more, we could see how we could handle that. So I'm not gonna turn any of the trees away at this point. Yeah. So please, Grab the list, start working on the list, and get me the list as soon as possible for another eight, roughly eight trees. I have three or four right now. That's perfect. And then Cindy has another one, so we're halfway there. Good. Okay. I looked then, at um, uh, West Rock School and Aiken Street last fall when they were starting the new field. And we had some uh, neighbors that were concerned with the trees that were re removed over there. And if you want, I'll partner with uh, probably Ken for that because they'd have to go, they would they would function as street trees, but they'd have to go inside the fence on school property. Okay. For West Rock School. Okay, yeah, that'd be good, uh, definitely. So if we can get those as soon as possible, I'd like to have them for the March meeting 
so that we can place them, the orders for April and then have them planted in April and May. That'd be awesome. And then that'll be the rest of our budget. Perfect. Um, Paul, since you're already up, um, you had some kind of exciting news about the budget kind of being, you know, chugging right along. Uh, we had put in requests for the capital budget. And remember the capital budget is a four pronged process. And what I mean by that is we submit our requests and then the finance director reviews and makes his recommendations. The planning commission reviews it as their public hearing and makes recommendations. Then the mayor makes his recommendation and the common council makes their recommendation and approves the capital budget. We had originally requested for 65. I had talked with Anthony and with everything going on this year, we were gonna see if we could get maybe up to $80,000. Uh, with everything going on, it probably was not the best time to do it because of the uh, capital budget issues with the schools and everything else. Uh, so we stuck with the 65 and the good news is, is at this point, the planning commission had their public hearing and they appeared to recommend the 65 from what I've been told. And also the finance director did recommend the 65,000 at this point. So two of the four prongs, it appears that the 65,000 that we've requested now is gonna go through, but we're waiting for the final two, the mayor those, and the those county are council. Those two hardest gates, correct? So the finance director too. So it's good news yeah. that the finance director recommended it. Right. And we'll hear by when, Paul? Uh, we'll probably hear in another month or so, couple months. Okay. Which is fine because our fiscal year doesn't start until June 1st. July 1st. July 1st, July 1st, July 1st, July 1st to June 30, right. Okay, so we have time. Okay, cool. Um, did you want to... Um, oh, so, so the next item up are some grant applications. Um, as you know, I was sending emails out trying to find a location for the NEEF grant. Um, Paul got back to me with Ludlow Park and I submitted the grant um, look, NEEF is only $2,500, but it will still support um, a bench and two trees at Ludlow Park. Uh, we looked at the area and determined that there is a kind of a children's area sandbox and, and little kind of playground, age appropriate playground in the corner. And there are no trees over that. So I'm sure it gets pretty sunny over there. And we also noticed that there was no bench or anywhere for a parent or a caretaker to sit to watch kids as they were playing. So we determined that this would be a great place to put a bench facing the children's play area flanked by two trees. So that'll take up our 2,500. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, obviously if we get the grants, um, it was submitted, um, I wanna say it was due February 1st. Uh, so it was right after our last meeting and we hear um, mid to the end of March, if we get it, and then it can be part of our, um, you know, planting program going forward. Did we get sign off from Nick? Paul? I had talked with Ken Hughes and Nick about it. Yes, we did. Okay, good. I think that's Paul worked with them actually to get the idea for Ludlow Park. So yes. it wasn't, I don't really know a lot of these areas, and which is why I am constantly coming back to the group for locations, you know. So, um, so Paul worked with. Uh, some folks there and came up with that location. And when we looked at it, it just made all the sense in the world and really fit, you know, the $2,500 um, uh, budget. Oh, good. The other grant that came up is an Arbor Day Foundation grant that Paul was emailed and only Tree City USAs are eligible to apply. The really exciting news about this grant is that it is um, $50,000.
Uh, 25,000 of it can be used for trees. We are not required to match funds in any way, shape or form. 50% um, as I mentioned for trees, the other 50% can go to um, maintenance supplies, community outreach, education, and um, <clears throat> if we wanted to put in other vegetation like understory, um, bushes, that kind of thing that would not fall under the 25,000 for trees. That's some of the good news. Um, there are some conditions that need to be met. I'm not worried about them. Um, they are very, very similar to the TD Bank grant that we got with the um, Arbor Day Foundation. This one is very, very similar, except it's A, more money, and B, with Bank of America instead. Nice. And I um, also talked with uh, Darlene Young about the location you had asked me, Erica. Yeah, did she come up with anything? She said that the townhouse gardens might be a potential location. Where's that? Is that a new development? I don't know what that is. It, it, it's, it's a uh, housing project, housing authority project. Oh, okay. Where? So uh, I can check and look. Uh, hang on one second. South Norwalk. Yeah, it's oh, down yeah. in South Norwalk, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're for the most part towards, I mean, there's one or two in East Norwalk, but they're mostly so now. Um, I reached out to the folks over at Rudner Court again because it was just such a pleasure working with them <clears throat> for one of those last grants. Um, we can take a look at this um, townhouse gardens, but you know, Paul just sent me this email with the grant last week. I read through it um, and got all my ducks in a row. The only bad news is it's due March 5th. So mm -hmm. I can't write everything if I don't have a solid location. And, and that's, we almost lost the NEE grant because I, I didn't have a location. So I can do it and I'll stay up and I'll power through it and I'll write the grant, but I gotta have a couple of days and I gotta have to have a location. So if, if she thinks that townhouse gardens is a possibility, we need to get ourselves out there and take a look at it. Otherwise, I'm willing to walk Rudner Court or any place else that we think um, might fit the bill. Uh, and for anyone who's wondering why we're talking about um, some of the housing complexes, the grant is only eligible for uh, low income areas and the areas qualify based on zip code. So there's actually some areas that should qualify for other reasons, but because they happen to be, you know, 06851 or 06854, they don't qualify. Yeah. <laughs> so um, and that's why, that's why Darlene mentioned this one at the housing complex in South Norwalk. So, and I forwarded the email to Erica too. Yeah, oh, uh, I didn't get that email from her. I'll take a look at it. Tom Arbrin, are you familiar with that, uh, with that development? Yes, they have a um, they have a community garden up there, and there's an area with a gazebo, and that needs benches. I heard you talking about benches. It needs benches, and then there's an area that's like a hill. It's like a hill overlooking that's wide open for trees. Okay. By the that's way, hard. guys, I want to introduce you to Tom Arbrin. He's vice president of the uh, Tree Alliance, and he's sitting in for or standing in for uh, 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 for um, Alan. Alan, Broadband. It's it's great to meet you, Tom. You know, I, I really don't know too many people that are on that um, on that board anymore. So really, I'm I'm glad that you came. Thank you. Um, if you think that it sounds like a good area and they need some benches, um, I don't know if um, anyone is available. I can float around and take a look. We can take some pictures and um, and I can get going on the grant. But I need and to Thursday or Friday, if you want, Erica, maybe we can take a run down and we can check it out. Yep, that's perfect. I'm available Friday afternoon after two. If okay, yeah, if the three of us can go one. for sure. I see. Rich, Rich is 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 not making any eye contact. <laughs> well, I'm, trying to look up where, I'm trying to look up where Townhouse Gardens is. I think it's on Monroe Street. <laughs> That would be great, guys. This way, if, if I'm we supposed to meet Andrew that day. That's right. <clears throat> well, we're all crashing. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So let's do that Friday after two o'clock works for me. And we'll take a look at it. It will, um, you know, take some pictures and, and then I can just build the grant around that space. Okay, awesome. Arbor Day celebration, any new news, Paul, and how uh, we can help celebrate with the uh, elementary school? What I've done is tried to make contact with the schools. I've left a couple of messages for the principal again, and I left a message the other day for uh, uh, the former principal, uh, Sandra Fios, too. So we're trying to work get together with them to, so that we can uh, coordinate everything like we were talking about and see if they will allow us to do the planting on the school property, but in process, but haven't got a final answer yet. Is there a role for the Tree Alliance? Because it, as you know, historically, um, it's, a, uh, it's a program that's sponsored both by the uh, uh, us and the Tree Alliance. It's a, it's a co-sponsored program. If they want to, if we're going to do a virtual event and we want to have something read or said from the Tree Alliance, then yeah. I'm trying to get a hold of the schools to see if the school will allow us to do the virtual event with the children and stuff. And then if we go and they will allow it, we'll go with Cranberry. If they're okay with it, we'll plant the tree ahead of time, take some pictures of it, and then do everything else virtually. The one that was canceled, just point of fact, the one that was canceled at Cranberry, um, uh, part of the role of the Tree Alliance was to give a little talk, as we typically do. I did it once, Erica did it once, and Alan was supposed to, was, had offered in, uh, to do it. So uh, maybe that's something that we can, again, do, something that's... Uh, uh, that's educational and stimulating to the kids. You know, it's usually a 10 minute talk. And what I'm, what I'm trying to do is get them to commit, let us plant. And if they'll do that, let, and if they'll commit to a virtual event of some kind with the kids involved, then the next thing is planning that event, which would be one of them would be the Tree Alliance being involved in it. So do you and if I can get the mayor maybe to read the proclamation, we'll do three or four different things virtually and document that. And then we'll have Jeff and the guys from IT record it so that we can send it to the uh, Arbor Day Foundation for our Tree City too. Well, well if, if you get, want, if, 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 go, if ahead, you go ahead, Andrew. Nod, I'm sorry. No, no, if, go ahead, Andrew. If you do get a nod that they're, they, they're interested in going ahead, uh, um, if you would uh, send, a, uh, uh, send a note, engage uh, Alan, um, to yeah. let him know and let so he can he and his team and the uh, board can decide whether they want to go through and do something. I'd really like as to. As soon as I get the commitment, I'll send an email out to the whole group. Perfect. Paul, if you want, why don't we stop by the school on Friday? The administrators are there. That was going to be my next thing because Just, if they're I not mean, answering you know, the phone, I'm, I was going to go and knock on the door. Yeah, I'll go with you on Friday. Let's just do it. Okay. There's more than one way to get to them. Yeah, no, in person's always better. Yeah. And then we can, we'll do that before two and then we'll meet Cindy after two, but we have to do that before two so that we can ensure that they're there. Erica, I don't mean to interrupt, but if you send me the location where you guys are meeting, I'll try to do after two with you guys are at two. Okay, oh, there awesome. goes our date. Awesome, yeah. <laughs> you can meet after that. I don't know where, <laughs> I can't find it on my phone, the location, so. <laughs> Okay. Okay. okay, I'll send out like a little, you know, invite to everybody and we'll all meet up. Okay. That sounds perfect. Okay. So um so we'll we'll see if we can get going on nailing down an Arbor Day celebration for the city so that that could count towards the next um city Tree City USA. Um there should be no reason why they won't allow us to plant a tree or two on the grounds. Nobody has to be there except the person planting the tree and somebody taking a picture. Tom, yes. did you want to say something? Well well, yes. So um because of the tree lines, we had sort of moved away from the schools and we've teamed up with the Norwalk Community College, Norwalk Community Cares, and and the Norwalk River Association, Louise Washer. I don't know if you know her. And they've got a couple of areas that we were going to do an Earth Day and Arbor Day celebration. Um, I had written to Nick Roberts yesterday and there were some concerns in the, in the, oh God, I can't think of the name of Union the Union Park. Park with the permitting. 
Yes. And yeah. it's the one down the by things- the, where the pump house is, um, where they cut down some holly trees. And so Louise Washer had gotten some permission to put some trees there. And then there's a walkway over by Union Park behind some condos along the Route 7 connector. And the Norwalk Community College Cares was going to plant some trees with us along there. And we have- One thing that I just wanna mention guys too is with the Tree Alliance and I can talk with Alan about it. One of the things that we've gotta have for our Tree City USA related to Arbor Day is we have to have an affiliation with the 501c3 for the Arbor Day event, which is the Tree Alliance. So going off and doing other things without being part of that now is uh, something that wasn't really in the theme of what we were trying to do and might hurt us with the Tree City USA. So I'll talk with Alan about that, but we've got to be really careful about that because- What was the issue? The connection for- Tree City USA is you have to have an affiliation with a 501c3 for your Arbor Day event. And that was always the Tree Alliance. Right. We're not pulling away from that. Oh, you just indicated that you were, you might do, you might. Oh, no, the schools had not been available because of all the, 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 they weren't letting us on the property. So we, Norwalk Community College. Yeah, so I, I met, uh, I'm a professor at Norwalk Community oh, College. Good. And I, yes. yeah, and I introduced um, Alan to um, uh, Robert and May that a few of us know from the um, uh, CARES group on campus. We now, have a meeting CARES, this week. Yes, yeah, so now CARES gets some funding from the college, usually not a whole lot, uh, depending it's, you know, maybe uh, 1,500, 2,000 in that area. And it's to run programs and do certain things on campus. But because of COVID, there's really not a whole lot going on on campus that's going to be drawing from that fund. And so one of the things that Robert Amay offered to um, Alan and your group was that he could, uh, depend, you know, depending on um, how much the budget came back, maybe donate, you know, five, 800, you know, whatever he possibly could to, um, to a tree or two uh, uh, for the plantings. Yeah, they're so gonna give like five hundred dollars, I think. And yeah, so the he's park on was board. Woodward Park is where we were talking down where yes. the pump house is, Woodward yes. Park, and then where Union Square Park is. There's a walkway along the Route Seven connector there where they've cut a bunch of trees yes. down recently. Yes. And and the Norwalk River Alliance, we've teamed up with a couple of different charities in the last couple of months, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and um, the 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 Land Trust and the Norwalk River and one other. I'm just drawing a blank. And so anyway, so that was, we weren't trying to pull away from the Norwalk tree. Good. The schools okay, just good. didn't want us. The yeah. schools no, just didn't Yeah, no, it, it, it's fight. a thing where if we can put something together, we want to have the tree alliance involved so we can fulfill that commitment. But if you guys want to do other things in addition, that's great. I just got to make sure that we have you for that one Arbor Day celebration related to the city. Yeah, we 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 realize that we want to be there for that, and that's why we Good. were trying okay. to work with the parks. And Nick Roberts knows about this. There's been an email chain going back and forth with Nick to go to the park potentially. Does that Ken? help or not? Ken? Yeah, no, that definitely helps. That definitely okay. helps. And you know, too. we want you to yeah. be involved with obviously as many things. Well, as right. Possible, and, but- oh, yeah. As long as just one overlaps with what Paul needs to apply for that, then we're fine. Exactly. Great. Great. Well, we'll, exactly. we'll try to, we want to be in you know, the family. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's just, I just don't, we, we want to do as many as possible, but we don't want to end up doing one and then hurting another. So. That's I was going to make a comment about the redheaded stepchild, but I always hated that comment because I'm a redhead. So I'm going to move on. <laughs> <laughs> um, for NCC, um, we applied and received um, Tree Campus USA status from the Arbor Day Foundation. Um, we applied, so we applied and received it for 2019. We applied for 2020, haven't heard anything yet. Um, however, we're hopeful that we're going to get it again. And um, for us, we need to host some kind of a function on campus um, in honor of Arbor Day. And what I decided to do was a virtual program. And I have the Audubon Society is going to Zoom link with um, us and give us a whole talk on backyard birding, identifying birds in Connecticut and how to attract 
birds to your backyard, particularly urban areas like Norwalk. Um, it's an hour long program. Um, you know, we do have to pay for it, but I have funds through the college to go ahead and pay for that. And I'm going to use that and advertise that as our Tree Campus USA Arbor Day Foundation program, if that makes sense. Oh, good. Yeah, we'll still go ahead and, and plant a tree on the grounds like we, like we did last year. Um, even though we get COVID, we got two trees into the ground on NCC um, and Rich was super instrumental in that. So I'd still like to get a tree or two in the ground, but at least we'll have a little more of a formalized program to look forward to as well. It's gonna be on Thursday, uh, the 22nd of April. So it'll be on Earth Day. And it actually works out nicely because I know the Tree Alliance is looking at a program of tree planting on that following Saturday, um, the 24th. Tom, does that sound right? Yes, it does. Yeah. I think that's about so right. I was I really, heard, yes. Yeah, so I was really happy to hear that, you know, Alan was planning something on the Saturday, so there's no conflict, and we can kind of advertise as, you know, a group saying this is what we're all doing right. in, in the city of Norwalk for Earth Day and Arbor Day. Right. Um, and there's no overlap there. So um, I'll have uh, plenty of students who'll be able to attend your event on Saturday. And, uh, and help you get some boots on grounds and get the trees into the ground. Sweet. And um, and uh, and we'll have our uh, Zoom program on Thursday, the 22nd. It'll probably be during the day. I'm trying to get it to overlap with one of my actual environmental science lectures so that I can guarantee, you know, about 35 people at the Zoom uh, just based on that. And then everybody else will be kind of gravy. Erica, do you want trees planted on campus prior to the 22nd? Doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be. It, whatever works with your schedule and, um, and, and, and that kind of thing, I'm open to it. It could be before, it could be after. You know, in, in terms of satisfying Tree Campus USA, as long as it takes place within the calendar year 2020, we're good. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, 2021. 21. <laughs> I skipped over a year. <laughs> I didn't want to say anything. Good for you. <laughs> so every December, we have to apply for tree campus status based on what we've done in that calendar year. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You are up, Tom. <laughs> Okay, guys, I'm just gonna uh, mute for a couple minutes to go to the other meeting and I'll be back before we end. Yep, that's fine. Thank you. Hi, I'm Tom Arvon, nice to meet you all. Um, well, and, and our big thing coming up this week, it's the um, Fairfield County Gives Week. And so we're all hands on deck um, trying to get people to donate to um, the, the Norwalk Tree Alliance. And we had some good success. We raised about 4,400. We set a goal of about 7,000 for this year. Um, we've got, uh, the, the board's coming along. We're trying to along. It's been it was such a weird year. I don't have to tell you, I'm sure. Um, but we have more money than we have trees to plant this year. We're in a pretty good situation. We had some really nice donations over Christmas. Some people crawled out of the woodwork and, and it was pretty pretty lovely. And um, um, so that's this week and, and, and the, and we're working pretty hard on that. As you said, the Arbor Day, um, we are a little confused as to where we're going to go, but we know we have um, Omens has agreed to dig holes for us wherever we want to be. And we, we have the ability to buy trees. And we've got more money than we have trees this year. And, and one of the things that's changed um, in the last few months is we really want to spend down our treasury. We, we, we want to um, go to a little bit of corporate poverty, if you will, you know, have three years of rents and, and expenses, but the rest, let's spend it. We want to, we want to get trees out there. That's, that's our major goal. And, and we, we really did the, the Norwalk community college has that thing has come along nicely. And, you know, we did have that meeting this week. Um, we've also, there, with, with some bad comes some good. There were some, we got all these emails from Eversource when Eversource cut down these trees up by, and they was like, save us. And, you know, that's, we plant, we don't, you know, we're a, we're a tiny little 
you know, group. And, um, and so we didn't know what to do, but what good came of that is some people came rallying around us. And um, it was really beautiful to see the town of Norwalk do that. And it tied us together with the land trust, the Norwalk River, Vat River Association, and, and the Norwalk Community College and this other group, which has really strengthened us and brought some youth to the program. Um, and the other things, so the, the community tie-in has been a really beautiful thing to watch during COVID. Um, and so we are still um, exploring the Arbor Day where we're going to do it. I, I told those to Woodward Park and that area around Union Park. And then um, the only other thing that we um, are, are changing is we have these grants that we get from the third and the sixth taxing district. We're putting, I, I think he said six red buds in in the next few weeks down um, as the gateway to Rowayton. Um, that should be really pretty. Um, and then um, we're, we, we're off with the lottery in the third taxing dis district that Alan Andrew started for us. And that's going around, the email goes out next week, I guess, uh, for that. The only difference in that is because what we learned last year with Andrew can probably testify to this. We, we had a hard time finding places with um, that could take the bigger trees, the oaks, the lindens and what have you. Um, and so we've agreed to um, uh, use the medium and smaller size trees. And then since we do have money, what we're going to give them is an additional $2,500 um, when we go and survey the lottery winners and plant more trees than they know because we, we want to get rid of the money because they usually get about 100 people wanting street trees. Um, and so we should be able to accommodate this year. So that's sort of where we are in the tree alliance and, and we, we really want to help being the, the um, you know, Tree City USA. I mean, so, and we want to follow those guidelines, whatever you need. Um, we, we just need places to plant trees. Oh, there is one last thing. Um, this guy, Jeff Shore has done a beautiful, I wish I had it to show you, a beautiful um, graph of people who, um, where trees are needed in the city. It's on a Google map. It is spectacular to see these young kids that have come onto the tree lines. They went around with Rob Frazier and spotted, I think they have a hundred trees where a hundred places where trees are needed that were contacting the homeowners directly. Um, and that's something that the Norwalk Community College may get involved with it. And NCC cares. They were interested in that yesterday. So yeah, so Jeff, Jeff and uh, uh, Rob and I met a week or so ago to try and go over where we are with our GIS stuff, where you guys are with that from the Google Maps, see how we can integrate the two and get them to work together so we don't have to duplicate the work. Yeah, it's really cool. It was really pretty cool work. They drove around for hours. They probably did that for like 30 hours, driving around scoping out houses over since last fall. So that's us. That's good, Tom. Awesome, awesome. Okay. Oh, oh I did forget one more thing. No, I'm sorry. No. We um, are planting a tree on Nurses Day. I just looked at my notes. On Nurses Day at Norwalk Hospital. We got permission to put a tree over there, which I think is May 8th, but don't hold me to that day. Um, we are planting a tree at Norwalk Hospital. Um, and that was um, about the whole court and uh, uh, honoring the first responders. That was the last thing I needed to say. I'm sorry. That is an awesome idea. I love it. I love it. Any other business anyone wanted to discuss? I know, I know Paul's not with us at the moment, but- I'm back actually, I'm back for a few minutes. They didn't start the uh, item in conservation yet. I, I sent Paul a couple of trees for the tree <laughs> city list for the contractor. Oh. I know we uh, attached that as an attachment for revisions. So I know we were planting tulip trees that wasn't on the list. So I gave Paul that. And I think I added star magnolia because we only had saucer magnolia. And I forget what the other one was I sent. Yeah, hold on a minute. Yeah, if anybody else has any trees that we want, we talked last month, take a look at the list. I sent it out the other day with the agenda. If you've got any of them, send them to me so that we can add it to the list because one of the next couple of weeks, I wanna see if we can get purchasing to start. I'm putting the RFP together so we can advertise it, interview the people, and then it'll take a month to get the contract. So already you're the beginning, you're, you're back at the uh, beginning of June from June 30th. So now you got a month or two. So time is running out quick. I'd like to see if we can uh, 
be able to get that advertised within maybe the next month or so. Yeah. So the some one I added was, um, and, and Tom, you'd be interested to hear this. Um, when we planted down at Woodward Park, we utilized silver linden because they're, they're a better pollinator tree. And Louise wanted that. And I did some research on it. And it actually turns out that of all the linden trees, the silver linden are the most salt tolerant. Ah, ah. That's actually a really good fit down okay. there. Swap out silver lindens because that's an area that's prone to flooding with the high salt water. And it, it worked for the pollinator people. It worked for uh, Woodward Park. And so we added silver linden to the planting. And those are native species? I, native species, <laughs> good pollinator, made everybody happy. It was a win, win, win. So uh, I think it's a good tree to add to the list for when we renew the, or put the contract out for review. There's some yeah. trees we need to delete because I noticed in my binder anyway, st we still are offering ash trees. No, we deleted them. We did it. Okay, good. Yeah, good. They, good. they should be off of the list. Maybe that might be an outdated binder. Yeah. yeah. You know, can we uh, index that binder some way by prefacing it with the right tree for the right spot? Because I think sometimes people get too fixed on some of these terms, like it has to be a pollinator tree or it has to be this, it has to be that. And, you know, you bring up a good point. We have to put something in a location that needs to be salt tolerant. If we could find a native pollinator, then awesome. But sometimes we have to forego one or the other in order to have a successful tree. So is there well, some way to, to have some information on there so that when we're going out or when tree liaisons are going out, they could look through and say, oh, well, you know, you are in a flood zone, so you should look at these trees here. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Uh, what I can do is, and that's one of the things, Rich, when the orders come in, a lot of times I'll take a look in an area. If I'm going out to put the stake in the ground or doing something and ordering it, I'll take a look to see if it is in an area and also what the salt tolerant species are, because I have a list of those. But if we want to add more salt tolerant trees to the list, of planting to begin with, that would be helpful too, because it would be nice to have a few more to choose from. You know, we have that list from Louise also uh, with a lot of trees, so we can kind of cross reference it. But I well, think that's the we pollinator, should... right? I have a list of actual trees right from uh, the Yukon and the different websites, and Olmstead got me one too that are good for salt tolerant areas. Well, that's not the only, uh, that was just an example. I'm just, yeah. I'm just saying that we, you know, we want to take you know, Luis's list and these other lists into consideration and, you know, utilize it where we can. But I guess my point was that the binder should be called the right tree for the right place, you know, okay. and just kind of index it based on certain things. Like maybe there's a tree that doesn't get to a certain height and it'll be great to put closer to a power line than another kind of tree, you know? So we have to look at the space and make determinations based on that as well, not just a blanket statement. So the right tree for the right place is really important. The guidebook, the guidebook does have a lot of that information for the height of the tree, the span, the different things in the guidebook. So that's one tool. And if everybody doesn't have it, we can send it out to everybody again. Yeah, I'm, I'm really into uh, uh, telling me like I'm a five-year-old. You know what I mean? So just have that book so user-friendly where it's just like power lines, overhead, whatever, go for these trees. Flood zone, go for those trees. You, you know, just make it like, like super crystal clear. And we can take a look at that. And then I can send out the salt tolerant list too, so. That'd be great. And then um, Tom, um, when I, I know you guys are, are doing a lot of planting and some awesome stuff, is there, some way that at the end of the year, you guys can give a list of trees or the number of trees you planted to Paul so that he can include them. Um, I think you guys do this already, but I just wanna throw it out there to make sure because you're really moving and grooving this year. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah it's gonna be a good year. We can, I yeah, think we can so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Paul, sure. how you know, I'm sorry, I was just gonna say Paul tallies the number of trees for the Tree City USA. Yes. And what everyone else plants, especially you guys, really is, is impactful. 
And the volunteer the hours night. too. The volunteer hours are really important. Oh, I'll write that get down. Credit for that. Yeah, volunteer uh, hours. More than that. More than that. More than inventory. Uh, Paul has uh, it on a map. He has his interns putting it yes. on a map. Well, that's so, what we're talking about. We have it on Google, and yeah. we're going to try to interface them somehow. Yeah. Right, right. So we have a GIS map of where we've planted trees. And when other people let us know that they've planted trees, we put them in under a different color so that we can very visually quickly discern what's been planted by the Tree Alliance versus um, Norwalk River Watershed versus the um, Advisory Committee, for example. We'll have it. That'd be awesome. Sounds good. Yeah. I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, I have old oh, business over, uh, and this is directed to Paul. Paul, has Chris Donnelly now uh, retired? Yes, he has. This is the guy from the yes. Arbor, from the uh, from uh, Connecticut. He yeah. retired, and a woman has taken his place. Yes, um, I, I can't should remember her said, name right now. Should we? Did we send a letter uh, thanking him because he's been a real friend to uh, to Norwalk to this uh, to this committee? Over I don't know where to send it to. I'd have to track him down because he's not at the state anymore. I, I know where to send it. I think that's an excellent idea. I'll get you the address and we should definitely, that's a really, really good idea. Paul, well, why don't I talk to you? I'm happy to draft a letter, but I, I'd like to know a little more uh, about what he's done over the years, how long, yada, yada, and some highlights. So okay. it's more than just a uh, two paragraph things. It's, it's, we can get would the be really nice. We could all ink that letter off before you send it. Yeah, absolutely. We should all yeah. sign. We should all yeah. sign. All right, I'm going to say goodbye because I've got a. They're looking for me in the other meeting. He was okay. super instrumental in the Tree Campus USA as well. So, so I've dealt with him, and he had some really great suggestions going forward. So he's really, um, he was really a positive um, force. Um, I've spoken to the woman who took his place. Her name escapes me right now. She's fantastic. And I'm sure, you know, going to be great to work with going forward. But I think it's an, a really, really good idea, Andrew, to acknowledge all of the, he's, he did a lot of extra work with us and for us that he didn't have to do. He so. did. He did. So, yeah, thank you. He did. Last I think he came to all 10 of the uh, tree festivals consecutively. Last yeah. time I saw him, he came down. Uh, to the memorial service for her, for uh, uh, for um, her, Hal. Hal. For Hal at the Fodor Farm. That's where I met him in person for the first time. Yeah. Yeah, he's a great person. Yeah. Anything else, guys? Send me where we're going to be Friday, and I'll, I'll meet you guys Friday too. I'll send it. We're going to be Friday. I will get Chris Donnelly's uh, email out, and I am just going to verify that there are going to be physical people there on Friday for us to go in and get that taken care of. Perfect. At the uh, Cranberry School on Noah Lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm awesome. adjourned. <laughs> Meeting adjourned. Thank you, Erica. Good with you all. Good night. Take care. Have a good night. Have a good night. Bye. 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 Bye.